Hey, it's Mr. Bebe, and this lesson is on photosynthesis. So let's get right into it with our first key concept. All cells need energy to carry out cell functions. And we're talking specifically about photosynthesis today, which is how some of these cells get the energy they need to carry out those functions. So let's talk about some types of energy so we can familiarize ourselves with them. So solar energy comes from the sun. We're going to talk about that in photosynthesis. Chemical energy comes from chemicals, or it's the energy that's stored in food. And then usable energy in the form of ATP, adenosine triphosphate. That is the energy currency of the cell and what it uses to carry out its cellular processes. All right, now a very important distinction we're going to make here is between matter and energy when we look at photosynthesis. Uh, matter is anything that contains atoms, so it takes up space and it has mass. All right. Uh, energy is a little bit different though because it is used to carry out processes and doesn't really have mass or take up space. So if we look here, uh, we're going to talk about two different processes that convert types of energy into different other types of energy. And these uh, processes also cycle matter by recombining the atoms into new molecules. So the first process we're going to talk about in this video is photosynthesis. And later on, we'll talk about cellular respiration, which uh, does things in a little bit of an opposite fashion of photosynthesis. So here we go, photosynthesis, right here. This is the big equation that you have to memorize, uh, balanced and everything. So you need to know that six carbon dioxides combine with six waters and sunlight to make glucose and six oxygens. All right, so this is very, very important. You should definitely write this down. So let's examine the reactants first of photosynthesis. So that's on the left side of the arrow in a chemical equation. So which reactants contain matter and which ones contain energy? Well, we have them labeled here, so it's a little bit easier to figure out which ones contain energy. That's the sunlight, the solar energy. Now, the water and the carbon dioxide are technically matter because these are molecules that have mass and take up space. So let's move over to the product side, the right side of the arrow. So we've got the two products, glucose and oxygen. Now this one's a little trickier. Which one is matter? Which one is energy? Okay, well, glucose is actually chemical energy because it's food, sugar, but it also has mass because it's a, it is a compound. It takes up space. So the glucose is both the chemical energy and it is matter. And then oxygen over there on the right is just matter. There's no energy in the form of that whatsoever. So what uh, organisms use photosynthesis? Well, we know all plant life uses photosynthesis, so that's why I don't have a picture here. But uh, other things like plankton, specifically phytoplankton, you know, these tiny little organisms that you mostly find in uh, aquatic environments, and also euglena, that's a, that is a, uh, an organism with the flagella that you can see there. It's, it's one that we like to use a lot, um, but you can tell because of its green color uh, that it does have some chloroplasts and chlorophyll that it would use for photosynthesis. So where does photosynthesis occur? This is very important. In eukaryotes, uh, photosynthesis occurs in the chloroplast, which is pictured on the right there. Uh, because eukaryotes have uh, membrane-bound organelles, uh, then namely they use the chloroplast to carry out that function. Prokaryotes do not have membrane-bound organelles, so they contain the enzyme chlorophyll uh, in their cell membrane. So it's very important that you realize that chlorophyll is the enzyme that helps trap sunlight and it is present in both eukaryotes and prokaryotes. It's just that the chlorophyll is inside the chloroplast, if you're talking about a eukaryote, and the chlorophyll is inside the, the cell membrane if you're talking about prokaryotes. So this last little chart here is going to kind of give us an idea of the steps of photosynthesis. So one of the first things that happens is carbon dioxide and water enter the plant. So carbon dioxide comes in uh, through the stomata, that's the little openings of the leaves, and then water is absorbed from the roots. So now the plant has two of the reactants necessary for photosynthesis. Then what happens is we need sunlight. So we use chlorophyll and that traps the sunlight so that we can use it to recombine the water and the carbon dioxide to give us glucose, C6H12O6, and some oxygen that is given off. So again, we trap the sunlight and with the chlorophyll and then carbon dioxide and water are recombined to make our new products and that is photosynthesis.